Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Desiree. Um, I just see my pronouns are she, her. And so for this workshop, I will be talking about, you know, just anime and some LGBTQ plus representation within that uh, genre or medium. Okay, uh, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. You can see? Okay. Oh, okay. So, LGBTQ plus representation in anime. Uh, okay, so as an icebreaker, uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves and type in the chat what your favorite anime is. Can I see the chat? I can't. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to see if I can see the chat. If you're not able to see it, I don't mind reading it to you. OK, yeah, if you don't <laughs> mind, because I can't see it and I don't know how to work it. Not at all. Um, so Kieran, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, they them pronouns that their favorite anime is Gaia Kugurushi from School Live. Nice. Not a lot of people. I don't think I've heard a lot of people watch that show. So nice pick there, Kieran. Um, um, Alexis Sheher says their favorite anime is My Hero Academia. Um, yeah. Ali they them says my favorite anime is Death Note. <laughs> Awesome. I actually introduced Ali to Death Note, so that is why it's their favorite. Um, Bridget, she, her, uh, pretty new to anime. Don't think that she has a favorite yet, so an opportunity to hear more. Awesome. Uh, well, I guess... No one else has said anything yet. I guess you can just move on a little bit. But it's uh, great to hear what your guys' animes, favorite animes are. And for the people said that they are not really into anime, I have some recommendations in here. So if you would like to get started, I have some. Um, OK. Uh, we have a few more here. So Luna said that their favorite, an I'm sorry, her favorite anime is Fruits Basket. And oh. Sarah, she, her, said her favorite anime is Naratu. Nice. Um, awesome. I love Fruits Basket too. I think that was actually one of my first animes that I ever watched. It's a really good show. So for anyone who would like to watch something that's kind of cute and has an interesting premise, definitely give Fruits Basket a watch. Um, OK. Well, thanks for sharing. And if there's any more people who want to share feel free and i'd love to hear them but i guess for now uh i'll move on to terminology that i'll be using in this presentation so you have yuri which is like girl on girl love and yaoi which is boy on boy love i'm sure some of you have probably heard of those terms before they're used a lot in the anime community um these are not considered like mainstream anime but they do have a market in japan so a question for you guys. Why do you think that Yuri and Yaoi aren't really mainstream? Um, I believe that it might that they aren't very mainstream um, because um, some people who don't support the uh, LGBTQ com community don't even if they do like anime, they they don't like that dynamic. They would rather see more straight ships, that, um, which I've seen a lot of Yaoi and Yuri ships in my time of watching anime. Um, I'm honestly okay with anything as long as it's legal. Um, but it might just be because of my friend group, but I hear this these terminologies a lot, and it almost seems mainstream but it's probably just because of the group of friends i hang out with that's a really good point 
and uh, I agree 100 <clears> percent. <throat> That's sort of why I think it's not mainstream either. But like, you know, when you get into fandom and stuff, it probably does seem more mainstream because when you're like using Tumblr, or, like, you know, fan fiction websites and stuff like that, you know, people are always using Yuri, Yaoi. So it seems more mainstream to like the fandom side rather than just like the people who don't really get into the whole fandom thing and just watch shows in general. Uh, so does anyone else want to say anything or add anything? Okay. Uh, all right, I'll move on to the next one. Oh, I don't know if the slides. Okay. Oh, well, I already asked why is it not as mainstream. Um, I guess the reason why I actually, let's see, I had a slide here that was talking about, <laughs> wow, this is just not working for me. Um, okay, sorry. Um, so I wanted to take a moment to talk about some representation. And I think one of the first that I can think of back to when I was a kid is Sailor Moon. And a lot of people don't know this because when Sailor Moon was released in North America and they did like the dubbed over version, which is just like the English voice actors, they didn't dub an entire season of Sailor Moon because it involved these three characters, which as you can see, when they are trying to be human because they are technically alien characters, they present themselves as male and then when they transform they present themselves as female and so when they were dubbing it over they didn't know how to explain the context of that and so a lot of people in the community have been talking about how this is representation of like the transgender community um has anyone ever like watched the entirety of sailor moon or like seen this arc with these characters Okay, well, if not, I suggest that you give it a go because it is a very interesting section of the show and they talk a lot about gender roles and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so the big one, how many of you have heard of Yuri on Ice? Um, we're getting some response in the chat that people have seen it. I've definitely seen it. Looks like two, three folks have seen it, um, or at least are familiar with it, heard of it, but have not watched it yet. Okay. Um, so I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't watched it, but um, this show is, I mean, it's about figure skaters, specifically male figure skaters. And um, it was a pretty mainstream show. And there was, I mean, I don't even want to call it subtext, like, it was just blatantly like a gay relationship, but it was pretty mainstream, which is why it caught a lot of attention, uh, especially amongst sports fan animes uh, fans, because like, you know, usually when you think of sports anime, you think of just like, you know, basketball, or I know probably a lot of you have heard of Haikyuu, which is all about volleyball. Um, so yeah, this really caught the world by storm, especially, the communities that were, you know, I mean, I don't want to say like Yaoi fans are un an underground society, but like, you know, mainstream fans and Yaoi fans sort of came together on this one. Um, yeah, I, I think a couple people said they haven't really watched a lot of anime. I definitely suggest watching Year on Ice. It's pretty short, it's only 12 episodes, but um, it's really good. I think they're coming out with the second season or a movie soon. So, yeah. Um, so I had some recommendations in here. Um, Rose of Versailles is a really old anime. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of any of these animes that I have on here, but, um, yeah, I don't really want to really give it away, but all these shows I suggest you watch if you would like to see some, like, representation of LGBTQ plus people anime some most of these are pretty mainstream especially revolutionary girl because i think someone who worked on sailor moon actually created revolutionary girl because he wanted to 
have more blatant like lesbian relationships and they were like no so he's like i'll make my own and he made revolutionary girl so um you guys should definitely take a watch for all these um oh, sorry I guess I wanted to get into queer baiting, which I think all of us here have dealt with in a lot of mediums. Um, first thing that comes to my mind is like supernatural and all of that for queer baiting. I'm sure, I mean, how many of you guys have heard of queer baiting? I mean, I'm sure most of you have. Um, yeah. So. I mean, I guess I'll just define it just in case anyone doesn't actually know the definition, but it's uh, queer baiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which the creators hint at, but then do not actually depict same sex romance and other LGBTQ plus representation. Um, so yeah, I guess my question to you guys is, have you watched any anime recently or in the past that you really felt was like queer baiting in, in your opinion? Because I have a few that I could think of off the top of my head. Okay, Karen, I see you've said you've definitely seen some. Yeah. Uh, Bridget, I definitely agree. Yeah, Luna, 100% with Legend of Korra, I'd say. Um, so does anyone like, well, actually, that's a really interesting comment, Luna. Yeah, All right. Um, so, why do you think that it's uh oh voltron <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah voltron definitely did i know there was a lot of people upset about voltron um why do you guys think that queer baiting is uh baiting is so like blatant like especially in animation I can tell you, I think that it's so blatant, um, especially in, in animation, because they know that there is money to be made um, in marketing to LGBTQ plus folks. Um, but rather than actually put in the work to do the correct representation, um, they just prefer to pretend that they're actually doing the representation. Yeah. 100 percent i agree uh i yeah i know in legend of korra um they wanted to go further with it but the um studio actually didn't let them because of um like publicity yeah i did hear that um who was at the end it was korra and asami right i think they just held hands and i think a lot of people yeah. were upset yeah right? yeah hundred um, percent. I remember personally going through the Voltron thing. I mean, I knew how hard it was like, well, everyone saw like when Voltron was being uh, promoted, especially for like, I think those last two seasons, like you always saw like Shiro with like the gay flag behind him. And then it didn't really amount to anything. It's sort of just- All, all we really got was like a wedding scene in the last couple seconds of the show. Yeah, well, like a, random guy who had no screen time so everyone was like who's that yeah yeah that was bad um but yeah uh, i'd say that like would you guys say that you think that it's getting better in any sense like that it's like their people are being more open about having those relationships and things or do you think it's sort of been the same throughout everything you've watched or from the time you started watching anime or cartoons? 
Um, I definitely have something. I don't remember what episode it was of My Hero Academia, but there was two background characters, two females. And um, me, along with a bunch of my friends, speculated that they were actually a lesbian couple just based off the way that they were interacting. And I believe the creator himself actually confirmed that, yes, they were a couple. But like I said, they were background characters. Right. But again, it was just nice to see that sort of thing, even if they were just in the background. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, you're seeing a lot more shows and like movies and stuff. Like I can think of like, I think the latest Star Wars had like two characters in the background and two women who were kissing. Um, But yeah, like you see more of like the background characters starting to do it, which before like you never saw, like I've been watching anime since... I was a kid and that was back in like the early 2000s and like you never ever saw it especially when things were brought over to the west from Japan like we were very staunch and like censoring everything like I think you guys have probably seen at some point like the memes about how Pokemon like dubbed over a rice ball for like a jelly donut it's like even something as simple as food was being censored so like when it came to like same-sex relationships it was like really like not even any subtext at all they just censored it right away um so yeah I agree Alexis that like things are starting to get a little better uh, let's see I'm reading your comment Bridget <laughs> yeah I 100% uh, agree um there's definitely a, a market I'd say for people you know, just selling to, because they know that, like, we in the community are going to buy it, like, we're going to feed into, we're going to tune in every week if they keep baiting us to come back and watch. So, yeah, they're definitely trying to just make a profit. Um, um, I know Netflix, for one, has a whole section um, devoted to, quote, unquote, um, representation matters, but most of the stuff is just queer, queer baiting. Really? I didn't know they had a section for that. It, it doesn't show up in like the um, rows, but when you hover over certain things, it'll say the representation matters collection. And then in like um, Voltron and a couple other things were put, put under that, but most of the things in the representation matters collection are just queer baiting. That's a shame, really. I mean, also I think it's a shame that it's sort of hidden. Like you kind of have to hover over something to look for it. Wow. Like I yeah. can't believe I didn't even know like that was a thing that I could like a list I could look on. Um, that's a problem in and of itself. Um, by any chance, do you know what else was in there? Like out of curiosity? Uh, I don't remember all, all the things, but I um, know there was Legend of Korra, Voltron, Kipo, um, and I don't remember the other things. Yeah, those are all pretty queer baby. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing, Lynn. I really appreciate it. Um, someone else is about to say something. Would you like to say your comment? Yeah, I, I would like to say the only, like, if I do see a, a queer character in anime, it's usually that very annoying, very pushy, very weird character that they show, like, in, um, um, Full Metal Alchemist. I there was a um, there was a queer character, and they they showed him as a very annoying, kind of very pushy, you know, very um, weird character. Yeah, you do often find that there's like that odd subtext where it's like if there are queer characters, like they're always perceived or like shown to be either like lonely or like bad in some type of way which is awful because then you send that message out to kids who might be questioning themselves and they see what they perceive to be their representation and it's not like a great representation because the character isn't given the respect that they deserve probably um and yeah it's a shame you do see that a lot even just outside of animation you see that a lot in tv shows and stuff like you know i feel like people in the community like we're always uh seen as just like either like that sassy character or just like 
the quiet kid who doesn't really talk much or, you know? So, yeah, it's a shame. Um, oh, I'm glad we had that discussion on queer baiting. It was actually a really good conversation. Thanks guys for uh, participating in that. Um, if no one else has any more comments, I'll move on to the next slide. I think there was oh. one more comment in the chat box. Do you need me to read it? Oh, uh, sorry, I could see it. Thank you though. Sorry, I just didn't notice at first. Um, all right, Skate Infinity, that did just come out. Yeah, I have not watched Skate Infinity, but I did hear. And actually, even in just the promotion material, I, I thought it was interesting how they showed the two main characters, like the two best friends, like the red haired guy and the white haired guy, right? So, wow. I mean, in the end, it, there was no payoff. I mean, I guess they do that a lot in anime and just cartoons in general. They always, it's always that dynamic of like red and blue, like, and then they, there's no payoff in the end. Well, thank you for that comment, Bridget. Um, yeah, wow, that really sucks about Skate Infinity. I kind of had high hopes for that one, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, that is really frustrating. <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, I guess I can move on to the next slide. But if you guys have any more comments or remember any other shows you want to talk about, feel free to like put in the chat or just like say something. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about Avu-chan because I think she's really cool. And I don't know if you guys know her, but um, if you don't, you should definitely check her out and check out her band called Queen Bee. So she is a transgender, half black, half Japanese singer that has a band called Queen Bee. She's been rising to fame in Japan and has been advocating for trans rights. And she's done music for Tokyo Ghoul, Devil Man Cry Baby, Bi -Bi <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Devil Man Cry Baby and Dororo. Um, I see someone in the chat has heard of her and she's really awesome. Um, she doesn't really do that many interviews cause I was trying to like find some, but um, the ones that she has done, I mean, I think are great. And you guys should just like YouTube her. Oh, she did one uh, for Naruto too. I didn't know that. Well, that's awesome. Oh yeah, wow. Well, she's, yeah, she's definitely done a lot of anime, more than I've listed. So honestly, guys, like go check out her discography. Oh, okay. Thanks, Luna. A side note about the representation matters. Huh. They should really just like make that an obvious list, especially with things like what's going on in the world right now that should just be an obvious list um wow um but um yeah it's unfortunate that um so many anime and cartoons outside of just like the yuri and yaoi like it, like explicit like genres genres are just like really queer baiting in that way Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, uh, I should check out Avi Chan. She's really awesome. Um, let's see. I, and I had a slide for questions. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, does anyone else feel like anime um, does the thing where it, checks, it sexualizes women and puts them as the damsel in distress when women are very strong. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's an interesting question. Does anyone want to take a crack at an answer? And Ali, I see you put something in the chat. Yeah, uh, I, I stopped watching anime for that reason. I I just didn't. I watched the an anime once, and it it showed like it was a zombie apocalypse, and it showed how the girls got more exhausted than the men, and how the men had to take care of the girls, and how they were sexualized as they were taking care of them, 
it was it was terrible and i i just really hate how anime does that yeah you find a lot in anime like i think someone said in their introduction there was a really good comment um about like things that are legal in anime i think you find that a lot of the time there's that trope of like the 10,000 year old vampire girl who looks like she's 10 and is like just overtly sexualized in some type of way. And everyone's like, but it's fine. She's 10,000 years old. And it's like, but she looks 10. Like, I think you find a lot like in line with what you were saying before about like the women are always seen as being like damsel in distress and the men are always like having to go in and save them. Like you really don't get like that strong female archetype as much as you would hope especially in a medium that's as like free-flowing as anime and cartoons. That kind of sounds way much more familiar to like Kaigiguri how it's like all like how it is like, it's like a school about gambling and like how, uh, how much people will like this much debt from money from gambling, they become like a house pen, like all these men, women sexualizing or like even hurting these house pets. Like it's kind of crazy. It sounds way much more familiar to that era yeah 100 percent I, I say and i definitely did say something about everything about thinking things being legal um what i was mainly thinking about was specifically a um a relation a ship that a lot of fans from a fandom i'm part of ship which is between a 5,000 year old spirit and a 16 year old boy and I just don't yeah. see that as being a very good pairing just because of the age gap between the two of them. But I yeah, that's a very good comment. Like it, even if it isn't actually, it wouldn't actually be legal. Yeah, I think you'll find a lot in fandom. You have that, <clears throat> like those groups of fans um you find a lot of, like that argument a lot in uh fandoms about like certain ships and like that age gap which like you said like it you you don't want to like you know write on anyone's parade per se but then you see stuff like that where it's like five thousand year old spirit with 16 year old boy and it's like uh that seems like a power gap and not really necessarily something healthy so yeah that's a really great insight there alexis Um, didn't want to ignore your comment there, Luna. Let me just read it real quick. Yeah, I agree 100% that um, the reason why Netflix does that is just for publicity. I think you find a lot, like a lot of these streaming services and just like a lot of these companies in general are like, we have representation. I mean, I think the number one I think of in my head is like Disney, where it's like, we have representation. And it's like, first of all, how long yeah, do you get there? Yeah, and second of all, like, is it really representation? Like, if you're just gonna like hide it or like even in some cases censor it in certain parts of the world, like, can you really say that that's representation for everyone? And for like Disney, most of their quote unquote representation is highly like stereotypical. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh... Let's see, I wanted to read Allie's comment and then Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. Especially in you know, like event like big things like the Marvel or Star Wars, like they're always saying like, yeah, we have it in there but then they really don't. Or, I mean, even have it in some cases where like, I feel like it's notorious at this point and like, I hate even saying her name, but JK Rowling going back like years later to talk about like adding things into the books later where it was like, you, you never thought about it until now. And it's like, I mean, thanks, I guess. But like when you have the opportunity to like show it, especially in like, I know there's new movies coming out, like she just sort of doesn't do that. 
and I think Disney and a lot of these other like even Nickelodeon with like Korra and Asami and all of that like they just do it in hindsight out of curiosity which character are you guys like talking about I feel like I should know this but there's a lot happening in Endgame oh okay oh yeah 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 a support group yeah I remember which one you guys are talking about yeah okay I definitely yeah see the fact that I d didn't even like remember that I think is part of the problem right where it's like that was just like a rando character I'm like yay like I'm glad to see they mentioned it for like two seconds but like you guys said they never mentioned him again he's not really a character um even in the comics like you have a couple of characters who've recently I think come out as queer I think the First one I think of is um, Iceman, maybe from the X-Men. And I think the X-Men is coming soon. So maybe they'll put that in there as something big. Could I yeah, and really hurt. My bad, you can talk. Um, so when Disney Plus first came out, um, there was a series that came out with it called High School musical the musical the series and it actually did have end up having a gay couple in it but it was a very st stereotypical gay couple um because of the fact that the two of them were both part of the um um both part of the um the theater the theater um the theater club right but i still felt that it was nice that they had that representation presentation because mm -hmm. it's taken a very long time um for different companies to start having that representation um so it's just nice to, it's always nice just to see that little bit of representation but i would yeah. rather have seen it as more of a more natural not as stereotypical yeah a hundred percent i think you'll find that like yeah it, the problem is like when you do get representation it's not like what an actual like relationship would probably look like it's just a stereotype because it's not written by people who are part of the community in the first place usually so they're sort of just basing it off of their things that they just see in other media which usually isn't really accurate and um yeah, Luna, uh, what you were saying about one one of Wanda's kids is gay in the comics. Yeah, now they're just like, he doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, I was hoping that they would bring him up more, but it never really happened, which is a shame because he and his boyfriend are kind of cute in the comics. So I was hoping for it. Um, let's see, I wanted to read Ali's comment here. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, great question. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think like Alexis was saying, it really is stereotypical when you do see it in uh, media these days. Like, it's there because they want to say it's there, but it's not, like, authentic, at least from what I can tell. It's just sort of stereotypes sort of thrown together, you know? And yeah, I think it is sad that all of us are just so starved for representations. Like we get thrown a bone and we're like, oh my God, it's amazing. And it's just like nothing. It's like, we kind of want a steak and we get like a chicken wing, you know? So it's a shame. Uh, does anyone else have any comments that they want to say? I didn't want to cut anyone off. Hmm. 
Yeah, Bridget, we, we do make ships out of it, anything. <laughs> you get like the tiniest scraps of something in a show and you go on like Tumblr or something and there's like gift sets made out of it. And it's like sad that we have to kind of get scraps to, you know, we're sort of making mountains out of molehills. Yeah, I can't blame us because I'm one of those people who makes the gift sets when you, I get like nothing. So yeah, it's sad. Like I wanted to mention earlier, I'm uh, in our activist group, uh, SSA. Um, uh, our teacher mentioned like uh, Captain America, like being a uh, teenage Steve Rogers and being like a queer man like gay and uh i was on like like where this has been and i was just right down the library like right down the street from me and uh we we're talking about like my librarian told me mentioned the president was gay and uh bucky from marvel was named after that 15th president i'm like i was like bucky do you need to mention mention something about <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she ships with Steve and Bucky. I'm like, yeah, that seems all right. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I love myself and Steve Bucky. Yeah, <laughs> I was definitely on that train myself, can't lie. <laughs> I totally agree, Ace. Like, I think of myself pretending in my head that the characters are queer like even if it's not explicitly said or the creators are like no they're not and I'm like yes they are just stop we know they are everyone knows they are right <laughs> and also Bridget I can't lie I'm really on that Sam Bucky train don't judge me too hard <laughs> this show is great I can't lie to you but that's the great thing about fandom you can ship so many people and that's like the great part yeah <laughs> if anyone's old like me remember back in the supernatural days you know dean and castiel we all know how that ended up but you know i was there <laughs> i was there for that about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man supernatural just makes me sad now guys <laughs> it really does <laughs> Um, and yeah, about this Shira show, I actually have not seen Shira, and I am ashamed of myself for not having seen the new Shira. My sister is in love with it, but yeah, I did hear they got a kiss at the end. And yeah, I thought it was going to be more of a season of relationship, too. Actually, I think one of the, I don't know if I'm like, reading too much into it but if anyone watched Adventure Time like Marceline and uh Princess Bubblegum that was like a pretty good uh relationship there I thought I mean I always shipped it as a kid but you know so I always appreciated that yeah it's a really good ship I mean it's a really good show that's another it's not anime but go watch it <laughs> it's really good there's good music too yeah, like Steven Universe, like how Garnet is like mixed with uh, Ruby and uh, I forgot the other name. And Sapphire. I just, yeah, I was thinking of Sapphire. I'm like, is it Sapphire or not? Yeah. Yeah, Steven Universe had a lot of representation. That show was really good. I mean, it was good for a time. Yes. It, it does have very nice music. I remember hearing somewhere that Steven Universe was um like all relations throughout it were supposed to be representations of different relationships that pe people can could be in like um sapphire and ruby's um relationship as being garnet was meant to represent a very very healthy relationship hence the abil their ability to stay in their garnet form um a lot of the time but then the I forget what the name was, but the one with lap fusion with lapis and um, Jasper uh, was, yeah. was supposed to represent a very very toxic relationship. Yes. Um, 
which honestly I think that was actually kind of cool that they actually did that um that they that they did so many representations of different relationships that that to me was just very very cool especially for a cartoon show with m mostly female characters yeah it's 100 percent yeah, a lot of people were talking about that when that episode first came out. And yeah, Luna Garnett even said like, yeah, they're just really not good for each other. And I, I actually really appreciate that they had that in a kid's show, you know, to kind of show kids like, yeah, you know, some relationships just don't work and they're toxic. I mean, that relationship was very toxic. And then you have relationships that work like um, Garnet, you know. So that was good. Um, Steven Universe had a lot of good lessons, I think, for relationships and even just showing like queer relationships in general that I thought was just very wholesome to see, especially because like people have said in the chat, like the show is just, it's good. The characters are cute. The music's good. Like that's just a very solid show, I think, to show these types of things. And I think a lot more shows could like, you know, take some lessons from that. Black Lightning. I actually don't know anything about Black Lightning. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, stop everything and go watch it right now. Um, <laughs> Ali knows because I talk about it all the time. It was the first Black lesbian superhero to ever be on network television. And um, this isn't really a spoiler, uh, but her partner um, who's also of color is called Thunder. So they're called Lightning and Thunder. Um, That's so okay. cute. It's very cute. I uh, highly recommend going to watch it. There should be seasons one through, yeah, seasons one through four um, on Hulu. Wow. Okay, nice. Yeah, definitely check that out. Wow, I can't believe I was sort of <laughs> out of it in quarantine. Uh, yeah, I got to watch that for sure. <laughs> That's an awesome recommendation. Thank you. Um, so yeah does anyone else have any shows they just want to talk about in general I mean feel free to uh, I want to I'm going to mention this but like um, like again I was talking to my librarian who was also part of like the community um, she said um, because I mentioned uh, Aaron when we were, when I was in this one other meeting, like at five o'clock, and Aaron from The Walking Dead, uh, Jesus and Aaron were like in a, in a relationship for like the past like six years because there was like a cut scene. And then she said, they ship, she shipped them. So I'm like, yeah, hey, you're not wrong. <laughs> right. Right. There was a lot of, I think there was at least, two queer relationships in the walking dead but like you often see that thing where like one of the people will just die and they die really quick oh my so God. you know i felt bad for aaron's husband yeah just a tear too. went down my face yeah for real those scenes are really sad um to answer your question bridget I'm trying to think of anything I haven't recommended already. Uh, I recommend um, uh, Doro Hidoro. That's really good anime. It has like a cyberpunk kind of vibe to it. Oh, that's the one on Netflix, right? With like the lizard yep. dude? Yeah. Yeah, that's good too. Oh, yeah, Luna. Fruits Basket. Guys, give it a watch. Just, just watch Fruits Basket. And like read the manga too, um, yeah. The <laughs> first basket's really good, and yeah, I don't want to spoil it, like Luna said, but like um, there's good representation in there for some things. Um, so give it a watch. Um, yeah, really good. Oh, Given. Okay, I haven't actually watched Given, so thanks for the rec there, Bridget. And yes, season three did just come out. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any 
um, recommendations that they can think of off the top of the head. I'm still trying to think of some that are like a little bit more quote unquote mainstream, but um, it's hard to find shows that have representation that aren't just queer baiting or don't end with like either the characters just not getting together or someone dies or something like that. So I'm kind of struggling to think of one. Um, um, I don't know, but I have like a huge feeling in uh, Kikiguri between like a kind of like how the relationship between Madari and Yumiko, but we all know Yumiko hates Madari's guts, so. <laughs> yeah, you always do. You gotta love those sort of antagonistic relationships enemies to friends to lovers mm-hmm. I can't believe that I forgot to mention strawberry panic I didn't even think about <laughs> it because right. right it's like the and I had to look it up because I remember I couldn't remember um I was like it's strawberry something uh, that one came out for for our younger friends that one came out in like 2006 yeah. I'm not sure where it's- you could find it now and it's not super mainstream but it's like where I would suggest to start for like Yowie fans, like for definitely lesbian representation. It's called Strawberry Panic. Yeah. Wow, I was a kid when I watched that. <laughs> Cause yeah, it did come out in 2006 cause I was like seven. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely suggest that one too. So good recommendation, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I might have a recommendation. Awesome. Um, Sailor Moon S. Um, honestly, I would suggest this one because of the fact that um, they actually brought back um, the one lesbian relationship that the show actually had when it originally came out. But when it came over to, um, over to North America the lesbian couple became cousins. Yeah. <laughs> They're always cousins when they come over here. Yeah. Sailor Moon's notorious for doing that. Um, but yeah, I also suggest watching the new Sailor Moon. It's really good. So thank you for that suggestion. Oh, Sakura Trick. I think I watched that a really long time ago, but I really don't remember it. I remember liking it. I but it's been <laughs> since I'm a little older than y'all. I'm remembering the old school, like back when we only had three lesbian anime shows to pick from. So now I'm remembering them all. <laughs> um, yeah, Sakura <laughs> Trick is pretty good. It's it's a little like I like the way that it just kind of subverts like heteronormativity in general, but there's not super overt themes like they're they're together it's not queer baby or anything um but I like the way that it just in general is very non-heteronormative awesome well thank you for that recommendation I definitely got to rewatch it because I don't really remember it that well but yeah thank you yeah there are some lesbian moments in Doki Doki Literature Club um played that game a lot it's a good game um yeah if you guys want to try like a it's sort of like a point not i don't want to say point and click that really ages me but um <laughs> it's like a visual novel <laughs> so i guess sort of point and click i'm not old i swear um yeah definitely try doki doki literature cub i think it's on steam if you guys are just pc gamers i don't know if it's on ps4 or xbox or anything like that. But I could be wrong. Um, yeah, there's actually a bunch of like visual novels that uh, <laughs> psychological horror game. That's a dating sim. Yeah. So if you guys don't like horror, maybe not Doki Doki Literature Club. But if you're not afraid to try it, it's it's good. I promise. I swear. Luna's right. It's really good. <laughs> I remember watching playthroughs of it, and at first I didn't understand why it was labeled as psychological horror until I finished it, and then I went, oh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
I like that cosplay though. That looks really cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you in cosplay? Are you CL from Black? Yeah, CL Phantom Hunter. Awesome. Yeah, I cosplay. This is my favorite thing to do. And I. No, awesome! I'm a cosplayer too. Yay! More cosplayers. I want to. I'm playing like cosplaying as uh, forgot his name, but it's the lizard dude from Dora Hidoro. He's really awesome. Oh, I forgot his name too. But yeah, you should. That'd be awesome. Awesome! I'm so happy that you guys decided to like show your cosplay. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, everybody. It looks like we are out of time for the evening. I just want to thank Desiree so much for coming and leading this discussion. We appreciate you. That was awesome. And I want to thank all of our youth and friends from Gliss um, for participating and showing us your cosplays. We really appreciate you. This was a great discussion. I just muted myself for anybody <laughs> who popped in a little bit late. Um, I'm going to put the link to the registration in the chat box again. So if you didn't get a chance to fill that out, please do that. And also to register for our virtual diversity prom, which is going to be on Friday, June the 4th. Um, and please feel free to send us an email here at GLIS if you have any questions. Um, and I'm sure that I can uh, have Desiree forward her contact info um, if you'd like to get in touch with her or have any more. Um, this is workshop number 12. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, if you'd like to have any more recommendations for us, we'd love to put something on our Instagram or Facebook um, recommending some great LGBTQ anime, comics, stuff like that. It's actually number 12. And there's my email in the chat box. So please feel free to reach out. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. It was a great discussion. It was so nice to talk to all of you. Nice seeing you all. <laughs>